Good morning. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the National Shrine of the Sacred Heart. Please all kneel for our daily morning prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our Father, I offer you my day. I offer you my prayers, thoughts, words, actions, and sufferings in union with the Sacred Heart of Jesus who continues to offer himself in the Eucharist for the salvation of the world. May the Holy Spirit who guided Jesus be my guide and my strength today so that I may witness to your love. With Mary, the mother of our Lord and of the Church, I pray especially for the intentions of the Holy Father for this month. Let us pray for the Church that she may receive from the Holy Spirit the grace and strength to reform herself in the light of the gospel. I also offer the intentions of all my relatives, friends, and my personal intentions today. Amen. Oracho Imperata, for protection against the COVID-19, together. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, and grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us to this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Prayer to Saint Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God, entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning once again, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. Today is Thursday of the 18th week in Ordinary Time, and today we also commemorate the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major. Our priest presider is Reverend Father Oji Orpiada.
sa hatag ng Panginoon Kung kaya ngayon nag-ibipon Upang pagsalukan ang kaligtasan Ang loob ng Diyos sa tanan We will now begin with our celebration as we highlight the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major. Today's Gospel is about Peter's confession. The way Peter understands Jesus in his life and the way Peter was entrusted the mission of the Church based on his confession. We remember also in a very special way all the intentions that we have received from our webpage and people whom we promised to pray for. We remember and pray especially for people who are victims of this COVID-19 and its variants for their speedily recovery for the souls in purgatory and the souls who are not remembered in prayer and for our personal intentions. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness for he is full of gentleness and compassion. For our lack of faith, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For our lack of charity, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For our lack of hope, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray, pardon the faults of your servants. We pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved to the intercession of the mother of your son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The whole congregation of the children of Israel arrived in the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people settled at Kadesh. It was here it, that Miriam died, and here that she was buried. As the community had no water, they held a council against Moses and Aaron. The people contented with Moses, exclaiming, Would that we too had perished with our kinsmen in the Lord's presence? Why have you brought the Lord's assembly into this desert where we and our livestock are dying? Why did you lead us out of Egypt only to bring us to this wretched place which has neither grain nor figs nor vines nor pomegranates? Here, there is not even water to drink. But Moses and Aaron went away from the assembly to the, at the entrance of the meeting tent where they fell prostrate. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord said to Moses, Take your staff and assemble the community, you and your brother Aaron, and in their presence, Order the rock to yield its waters. From the rock you shall bring forth water for the congregation and their livestock to drink. So Moses took his staff from its place before the Lord as he was ordered. He and Aaron assembled the community in front of the rock, where he said to them, Listen to me, you rebels. Are we to bring water for you out of this rock? Then, raising his hand, 
Moses struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out in abundance for the people and their livestock to drink. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you are not faithful to me in showing forth my sanctity before the children of Israel, you shall not lead this community into the land I will give them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the children of Israel contended against the Lord, and where the Lord revealed his sanctity among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people his shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tested me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. <laughs> You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say? that the Son of Man is. They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said and replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him and replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From the time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem 
and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed on the third day, be raised. Then Jesus, then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such things shall ever happen to you. He returned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are you an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Holy Gospel wipe away our sins. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The Gospel today consists of two sections. The first section is about the Messianic Confession of Peter. And in that confession, we can see two opinions, prevailing opinions. One is the public opinion. It is as if Jesus is making a survey as he went around for his public ministry he wanted to know the feedback of people just like we have research going on in order to survey popularity rating but the rating of Jesus does not lies on research, but lies on the way he was recognized by people. And he was properly identified with several personality, like the prophet, John the Baptist, Elijah the most popular personalities in the Bible. But when he asked Peter, who do you say that I am? It is not anymore a public opinion, but it manifested personal understanding in the act of knowing Jesus. And immediately, Peter responded, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. A full manifestation of the revelation of God. And it is not Peter who said it, but the Father will it to be properly revealed in the person of Jesus, that he is the anointed one, the Messiah who will fulfill God's promise and time. The second section is about Jesus' prophecy, an impending passion, death, and resurrection. On the first section, we talk about the human person trying to discover the plan of God in him. But the second part is God's plan for the people. And that plan, Jesus will offer his life for all and total obedience to God. And nobody will stop him, not even 
Peter or not even Satan. That is why the temptation that Peter offers to him, nothing will harm you. It will not be possible. It was a temptation to glory that when people are being uplifted in a higher form of possession as if they will not undergo pain and suffering, as if they will not be purified by history, as if they will always remain in a given possession, as if they are entitled for such prevalence. But Jesus, in his act of humility, he is doing it not for himself, but he is doing it for the love of the Father to fulfill the covenant of the Father and us, Jesus becomes the embodiment of that plan. This prophecy is not the plan of man, but that is a plan of God to humanity that Jesus will undergo the pain of passion, the pain of death, so that the sins of humanity will be totally redeemed, the symbol of our jubilee cross. That cross signifies our vocation. That cross signifies our mission that cross signifies the new community founded on of Jesus in the confession of Peter. If we would like really to dwell so much on the gospel account, we can see three lessons. The first lesson is about confession. Why did this event happen in history? In order to understand and recognize in our midst who Jesus is. In order to reveal the truth and to understand the truth. That is why the necessity of confession. Di po ba kapatid, marami tayong ipinapahayag sa ating buhay. But in the act of confessing something, are we properly founded on the confession of our faith? During the sacramental encounter with Jesus, in the sacrament of penance, penitent make an act of confession. Because in the many times that they denied the Christ, it is also the time that they need to reaffirm their faith. That is why in their confession, what is vital is an essential is the proper recognition of God's mercy. The proper manifestation of God's truth. The proper understanding that only in the truth we can set free. That is why confession sanitizes and sensitize our spiritual well-being that we can provide a godly life 
and our community and our society and even in our church. That is the first lesson in terms of our human element. We need God divine intervention. The second lesson is Jesus as he offered himself Jesus did not want to be tempted to avoid the cross. Most of us are being tempted because we would like to shortcut our journey. But remember, without suffering, there will be no glory. Without the cross, there will be no salvation. And finally, the third lesson that we can learn in today's gospel unfolding, despite of Peter's confession, knowing Jesus as the Son of the living God, is still Peter's sins against Jesus. Yet, Jesus, recognizing the vulnerability of Peter, Jesus founded his church on the confession of Peter. I will build my church, not Peter's church, not our church, but Jesus' church. And has he founded his church on the confession of Peter, he assured us of two things. The keys to the kingdom. The keys of binding and loosing that will constitute our salvation, not even the gates of hell shall prevail against it. Kapatid, ikaw ba ay tunay na Kristiyano? Or ikaw ay modified pagan, nagkukunwaring Kristiyano, pero hindi kilala ang Kristo? Nagkukunwaring Kristiyano, subalit salat sa pagmamahal kay Kristo. Nagkukunwaring Kristiyano, subalit walang paglilingkod sa kapwa-tao upang makilala ang Kristo. Sa kapahayagan ng ating pananampalataya bilang isang simbahan by virtue of baptism, we are called to a radical manifestation of our faith. Go out from yourself. Make a true and genuine confession of your identity, of your dignity and integrity as a person. You are being empowered by Jesus the graces that was given to us is a grace that we're somehow a certain that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is God. Kaya po, sa pagiging Kristiyano natin, ang unang mahirap na kilalanin ang ating sarili. Self-discovery takes a lifetime process how much more to discover the God and us. That's why we have an ongoing formation. Hindi natatapos ang paghuhubog. Araw-araw ay proseso ng paghuhubog. Sa tuwing tayo'y dumadalo ng misa, ang pare nagpapahayag ng kanyang paghuhubog sa pamayanan. 
at sa paghuhubog na ito, nauunawaan natin ang pagiging simbahan. We are a catalyst of change and transformation. Ang pagiging simbahan ay hindi maging membro lamang ng isang institusyon. But you need to be properly defined by the mission, by the vision, and the goal of being a church. Yan po ang pinakamagandang aspeto na naunawaan natin sa Ebanghelyo. Sinasabi nga, the ordained ministry or ministers are sent to a certain community in order to empower them with God's love. May this confession of Peter be our own legacy and life that we be able to contribute for the transformation not only of ourselves but also our community, society, and the church as a whole. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Please rise. Peter was given the grace to confess Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. But he must know that Jesus chose to be the Messiah who suffers. Let us confess the cross of Jesus as the power and the wisdom of God. Lord, let us be faithful to your church. Lord, let us be faithful to your church. May we remain faithful to the church founded by Christ on Peter and the apostles and given the authority to forgive sins, we pray. Lord, let us be faithful to your church. May the Lord protect the Pope, the successor of Peter, with the strength and guidance of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, let us be faithful to your church. May we see Jesus as the Messiah who first must suffer before entering into his glory, we pray. Lord, let us be faithful to your church. May we accept suffering and humiliation as path to glory, for Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example so that we might follow his footsteps, we pray. Lord, let us be faithful to your church. May we follow Jesus not only in good times, but also when hard time comes and when the cross casts its shadows on us, we pray. Lord, let us be faithful to your church. And for the intentions of our parish community, the particular petitions and thanksgiving intentions being offered in this Mass, for our own personal intentions, and for the eternal repose of the souls in purgatory, we pray. Lord, let us be faithful to your church, Lord our God. We will never understand Jesus as the Messiah without the cross, for it is not so much by his powerful deeds, but by his cross that he saved the world. Help us to embrace his cross by which we attain salvation. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid. And may he who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin 
did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds, made make our oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is only right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltations of all the saints and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's end, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. To Him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Margaret, Mary, Alacoque, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. 
and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. With the love of Christ, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away, away the, the sins, sins of, of the, the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may by imitating her serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Keep your family, we pray, O Lord, in your constant care, so that under your protection they may be free from all troubles and by good works show dedication to your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you all. The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.